Hello everybody. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do the DDR routing in Altium using Active Route. Now in the past I've hired PCB layout bureaus that took several weeks to route a single DDR interface. I just finished a consulting job with a large company and was told that the board layout there takes several months with the most difficult part being the DDR routing. Meanwhile, on the Altium website, there is a video showing it being done with just a few clicks. Here's the link to the video, and here's the video. Now well, that looked really nice and it makes one skeptical if the functionality that they showed in the video is actually real. But in fact that functionality is real but it takes considerable setup. And here are the steps. First you draw the schematic. It's very good if you set up pin swapping. You can right click on the component and do configure the pin swapping. Then you transfer the data to the PCB and you place the parts. And you go to the Stack Up Manager and you consult your DDR controller manual to determine what the proper impedance is. And make sure that in the Stack Up Manager the impedance matches what the recommendations are. It's also good to define a nice through hole via because when you're using active route, vias are not placed, but having a via with access to all of the routing layers is very good. Now you have to set up your rules, and there's a lot of them to check. Now the table below is a good place to start if you're routing with a BGA, and most DDR nowadays is actually a BGA. It's probably good for you if you take a screenshot of this because this information is actually quite good and useful down the road. Now you fan out the BGAs, both the DDR and the large BGA. You use the BGA tool to save time. Go to Route, Fan Out, Component. Make sure these two boxes are clicked. Click OK. And you click on the component and it routes it, routes the fan out for you already. If you're not doing DDR routing and you want to route the escapes, this tool can also do that for you. But for DDR, it's best just to do the ball to the via that has access to all the layers. Next, you want to run the X signal wizard. Design X signals, run X signal wizard, and you'll see that one of the choices is actually DDR3, DDR4 routing, and the only option they give you is the flyby topology, which is probably good because that's what is recommended for DDR3 and DDR4, and probably the older DDRs are not available anymore. You click Next, and you set up what your source component is and your destination components are. Then you define what the DDR address group is. You analyze the system and you create the classes. And then you define your data group. You analyze syntax and create the classes. And you may have to fiddle with some of these, um, these net names. And then you click Finish. Now for the big disappointment. Active route length matching doesn't seem to work in Altium 19.0.10. least that's the version I'm running with. And I verified this with Altium customer support. But it does work with net class. But the X signals that you set up have everything required. 
Now here's a route done with X signals. You see there's no length matching done. I took the X signal data, converted it to net class, and look, all of the uh, net length matching has been done for you. So how do you do it? How do you convert all those X signals to net class? Well, it's a little bit tedious. I'm not going to read through this because I've actually gone through the steps in the next few slides, but this is probably another good slide to take a screenshot of. Now you open up the PCB panel and you click on the X signals. And then you click on the desired X signal and you just observe that it is select selected in your PCB layout. Then you go to design netlist, create netlist from selected nets. Then you name the net for whatever it is you want to name it. And then you have to take the rule that X signals provided and assign it to this net class. To do that, you go design rules and you go all the way down here to the high speed nets and you click on the rule that X signals generated that you want to duplicate and click on duplicate rule. When you've done that, you make sure that it becomes net class and you give this name here the same name that you gave it up there. And you do that for all of the rules that X signals generated. Now you go to panels and you open up the PCB active route panel. You make sure that you enable pin swapping and you verify the length rules are what you want. You you select the traces. I like to use the PCB panel to select the traces that you want. Here they are here. And you usually put in the net class things that you just defined. Make sure that you check all of these max, match length rules that were defined. And once all that is done, you click on active route. So here's the routes before active route, and here they are after active route. Now I'm going to show you a movie of this in action. Thank you everybody for watching and for engineering consulting services, please feel free to contact me at shotengineering.com. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.